All right, Geo Traveler. Apparently, apparently a five star. If you think they're a molder, then you should be my beer holder. Cause that joke's older than your mother's f***ing shoulder. But you guys, you guys can go suck a boulder. Oh, and also I'm about to start a war. Let me's better. All right, story time. You're shitting, right? Pay attention to the fing Archon Quest, you Starting with their elemental abilities, elemental skill bigger than yours. For whatever dumbass reason, the Traveler calls this round ass structure a sword. What kind of shitty ass sword do you carry? Oh. Anyways, it does geo damage and creates a nuts boulder that gets in everyone's faces and is sturdy enough to let people crawl on it. <laughs> Elm the Burst, PP Blocker. The Traveler stomps on the ground, creating three shockwaves that deals geo damage to surrounding enemies and creates a geo structure that's useless without Zhongli and your Constellation 1. If you do have a Zhongli, his pillar will resonate with the structure, which can be helpful for the constant skill damage to proc a four piece tenacity that buffs your team. And just to mention, there is a possibility that this can get in the way of Zhongli's PP structure, other units' geo structures. It can also get in the way of your attacks, it can also get in the way of you. So, yeah, amazing PP Blocker if you ask me. It blocks everything including you. Has anyone left a big impression on you during our recent travels? For Paimon, that's Sarah. Timmy. Huh? What? <sighs> His face comes to mind every time I've eaten a sweet madame recently. Really makes it hard to chow down. <laughs> Moving on to passive talents, passive 1, your very round, curved, crusty sword has its cooldown reduced by 2 seconds. Passive 2, your final normal attack combo triggers a geo explosion based on 60% of your attack. Passive 3, you get to change your element and name anytime you want, you son of a bitch! Alright, story time. So the Traveler's story starts where they download this game called Genshin Impact. The Traveler works hard and grinds for Primo Gems every day. So they can use that to collect new characters from something called the Gotcha System. This system makes the travelers go through a lot of pain, yet the sweet nectar of the possibility that will give them the 5 star that they want motivates them to keep playing the game, which leads them to the symptom called Gotcha Addiction. Some travelers did this for a year, and then the game pulled out their middle finger on them. Best game of 2020! Moving on to Constellations. Constellation 1, when you're within the PP Blocker zone, your crit rate is increased by 10%. Constellation 2, when your Geo Structure is destroyed, it will explode, dealing the same damage as you cast it. Constellation 3, PP Blocker now has the ability to walk in on you. What? Constellation 4, the shockwave from your PP Blocker regenerates a lot of energy. Constellation 5, this is now bigger than Zhongli's. Constellation 6, your Geo Structure stays longer. Nice, because I definitely want to sack on my face and get PP Blocks longer. Moving on to artifacts. Geo Traveler, how do you build Geo Traveler? First of all, I do want to mention that if you do build your Traveler properly, you can do a lot of damage with your abilities. Her supportive kit is kind of the primary part of Geo Traveler's abilities, however, it's not really based on any scaling, so when you build Traveler, you just build them like any other DPS. For beginners, just go for 2-piece Berserkers and 2-piece Exiles. For endgame, unfortunately, the 4-piece Geo is probably one of the most dog P sets I've seen in the entire game, and I say this as someone who loves Geo units to the point where I literally ran Mono Geo in the Abyss. This 4P set is basically saying, I'll give you this buff after you apply an element on the enemy, then hit them with a the rock, then pick up the rock that's infused with that element, and then keep it on you and hope that a different element infusion doesn't happen, and then pray to God that it doesn't break, which happens 80% of the time. But Jay, can't I just build elemental mastery on a Geo unit? Okay. <laughs> Let's look. There's only five right now anyways. Traveler. 
just put a four piece noblesse because that's way more consistent for buffing. Ning Guang. <laughs> Noel. <laughs> Albedo. <laughs> Zhong Li. <laughs> this P set is the resin system of all artifacts. Timmy of all artifacts. Please, I beg you, don't use it and please don't build an elemental mastery traveler. But yeah. Enough about that. The P sets that I recommend is two piece archaic and two piece clad slash shimanalis. This is basically how you build a geo DPS, so do that. But personally, I use mono geo, and since I don't have any units with the four piece noblesse, I just use four piece noblesse. So if you're in a situation where you don't have a four piece noblesse on your team, then consider putting it on Traveler because it does help the team. And Traveler's burst damage is kind of decent as well, and you know, a lot of energy is involved with Traveler, so. Yeah, do that. For primary stats, you do want to go for attack percentage for sands, geo damage bonus for goblets, and then crit rate or crit damage for your circlets based on whatever you need. For substats, crits are always what you want to go for. The attack percentage and the energy recharge should do you fine. Moving on to weapons, starting with 5 star weapons that you'll definitely use on Geo Traveler. Mist Splitter, 44% crit damage, high base attack, and great ability for elemental damage. You definitely pulled this weapon to put on Traveler and definitely didn't pull for Shinobu. Freedom Sworn. <laughs> Aquila Favonia, the amazing base attack, amazing ability, but physical damage for primary stats is actually pretty okay. Wouldn't be my first suggestion, but it's actually a pretty decent sword. Scoured Blade, good base attack, energy recharge substats, and then the ability says, I don't care about geo damage. Jade Cutter, an amazing amount of crit rate, low base attack, but amazing ability. You definitely pulled this for Traveler and definitely will not use this on any other characters. Moving on to four stars, Black Cliff. Decently usable, just gonna cost you some star glitters. Credit card, pretty great, just gonna cost you some $14. Festering Desire, if you were here for it, then you played this game long enough to probably know that this is one of the best choices for a traveler. Favonia Sword, this is a battery. Sacrificial, it would be interesting, but I beg you to find yourself in your heart to find the true owner of this sword. The Flute, basically prototype Claymore, but not free. Free to plays, prototype physical traveler. Iron Sting. <laughs> Do it, silly, I dare you. Moving on to teams. Okay, first of all, I hate using Geo Traveler with Ningguang, because Ningguang's Jade screen keeps crumbling every time Traveler's Burst is present. You have the option of using the Jade before the burst, but uh that. A bunch of Geo structures might be cool to look at, but in all honesty, too much is too much. Aside from that, I think every other Geo unit will work okay. Just the fact that the ones that are present are basically supportive. And in my opinion, I think it's safe to recognize that the Traveler is basically a Geo battery that gives you crit rate, which is pretty good actually. So yeah, use them with other elements and Travelers should be all right. I probably wouldn't use Anima with Traveler because like I said before, this is a PP blocker zone and it blocks CC as well. And like I said before, Alto Mastery means nothing. But there are other elements that should work okay. The ones I suggest are basically what anyone would recommend. This guy and this girl. So I usually use Mono Geo. I think Traveler can be used in some Cryo Resonant comps that includes Rosaria. Literal crit spam might be able to change something, but otherwise. Oh god. So how the f do you play Traveler? Okay, first of all, Traveler's geostructure can actually be incredibly annoying. So here's some tips. Number one, the placement of this thing that's bigger than yours is really important because it can either save your life or f it up. So casting, the boulder drop speed is different depending on whether you're pressing it or holding it. When you press it, it takes the same time as Zhongli's burst. What? So try holding it. It's faster. Number two, sometimes you raise your enemies up onto the dumbass rock. This is usually bad because you can't hit them unless you're ranged. But if they're rushing straight at you and if you place it right, then you'll feel like a Hydro Abyss Mage. Nice. Number three, your burst can resonate with Zhongli's pillar. So do that. But that's it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed, leave a like and comment for YouTube algorithm boost for my lazy ass schedule. And go follow me on Twitch and Twitter because I do that. Okay, bye bye.